Welcome back as we conclude our series on how to light a Imperial Star Destroyer. We'll start with a 3.7 volt battery. A uh, drone battery is what I use. And we will cut off the connector, making sure you cut one wire at a time so we do not short it out to itself. We'll put this inside of the uh, in secondary engine fiber optics and house the battery in there. With our battery prepped, we will go ahead and fish it through those fiber optics in order to seat it in place. If you notice, I've grouped the two sets of fiber optics together. I find it easier to group them into a pair of two and then into a group of four to keep the alignment. With the battery in place, we'll go ahead and install that fourth LED along with heat shrink wrap in order to hold everything together. And then we'll close it all on up and then we'll want to make sure that we have equal brightness on all four lights. So as I said, you'll want to make sure that you test this out. I'll be using just the standard 3 volt coin op battery in order to do so since it's a 3 volt blue LED. As you notice, we will end up having one that's dim and we will keep messing with the LED there to get it adjusted just right so that all four are equal brightness. Once done, we're moved it, ready to move on. Once satisfied, you'll want to go ahead and use some electric tape to ensure that everything stays together and nothing pulls apart. Then for one final test here on the fiber optic to make sure that we're happy with the uh, brightness of all four, we'll use the battery again and confirm that all four are the same brightness. Then we're ready to move on to the wiring stage and finish up our Imperial Star Destroyer project. We'll be taking the fiber optic cable from the top hull and combining it with the ones for the left and right hull so we can feed a single LED to that power source. To keep the alignment, we'll use some electrical tape to group them up together. From there, we're going to install our recharge port right there and the switch on the other side of that ducking port, which means we'll need to use our Dremel to clear out a little space for them and for that to fit there and the switch on the front power. At this point, we know where everything's going to end up being connected. So we should be able to pre-measure how long our cable for the recharge and switch needs to be, as well as the links for each individual LED. I like to bring the positive all to one side and the negative to the other side of the ship for connections. The battery positive side will be soldered onto the recharge port and a resistor that will drop the voltage to the three volts required for the LEDs. The recharge port wants a direct path to the battery so it can recharge it properly without the interference of the resistor. With that joint soldered, we'll want to double check the length to make sure that the port can fit properly in the docking bay area. And then we'll want to start gathering up all of the leads for all the different LEDs and bring them over to mate up with that resistor. I find it's easiest to bring about three together and twist them together into a single wire and then solder that together and combine wires that way. As such, you don't end up looking at uh, six different wires into one joint, but rather two large wires into one joint. So now that I've cut the wires to length, I'll go ahead and twist them to bring these three for the engines together. I will do the same for the three for the fiber optics. And then I will solder it together to be one large wire here and combine those two wires of three to the resistor that was already soldered to the battery. The same process can be used for the negative side of the wires on the other side of the ship. We'll bring them to a common point here, cut the wires to length, twist them in sets of three, and uh, solder them in, in place. 
Instead of connecting to the resistor though, these will connect to the wire coming out of the switch. We will solder the negative wires together here on the right side of the ship here, which is a little different than I normally do where I like positive on right, but that's because the switch will bring it from the right side back to the left where the battery is. We also need a recharge cable to recharge the ship. I'll use two lossy connectors in order to ma mail to mail, but I will modify one end to remove the locking tabs, which will make it easier to insert into the Star Destroyer. And since we're only modifying the Star Destroyer side, I'll use a heat shrink wrap in order to identify the end that goes into the recharge recharger itself. This side still has the locking tabs. When you're done with all the wiring, you should make sure you do a few test runs to make sure everything's working, and try closing the model and putting everything in place to make sure that nothing ends up getting shorted, or that you have any cold welds that may uh, perhaps come apart when pressure is applied. If you're all happy, all set and happy with everything, we're good to put the final touches on the ship then, which include locking the switch and recharge port in place with green stuff. We'll want to grab just a little bit of green stuff to support the switch and the recharge port. You don't need very much, about half a dime's width of each. We'll use the green stuff to support the switch and the recharge port in place then we'll switch flip the switch over and clean out any residual that spilt over in order to provide easy access to the switch and recharge port and uh, you'll want to do this when it's all fresh so it's easy to come out with a hobby knife we'll repeat the same process for the recharge port using green stuff to hold it in place and then using our knife to put the port in its final location and cleaning up any extra green stuff that has fallen out and is visible from the bottom of the ship. Then we just need to glue the ship together and we will be all done. Thank you for watching my series on the Imperial Star Destroyer.